I know there's a lot of new people here, people that have never been to church, but I'm telling you, there's a move of the Holy Spirit that is sweeping across the nation right now. God is moving among his people. The power of God, jump in the river. Don't miss out on what God is doing. We have chairs outside, people outside, four pack services, people outside can't get in. We have seven people about to be baptized right now. The power of God. So we're turning this into an all out prayer meeting where we are crying out for revival. As they're getting baptized, we are gonna pray for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We're gonna pray for revival in our lives, revival in our marriages, revival in our families. Life song, we're in the time of revival. These are the times we've been praying for. The Bible says the prophets long to see what we see but couldn't. Friend, you are living in the greatest hour of human history. The harvest is plentiful. Lord, mark every person being baptized today, God. Lord, mark every person in this room, God. Today, we cry out for revival in this house. Lord, we will not apologize for your power. We will not apologize for your fire. We will not apologize for spiritual gifts. That at this church, we lay hands on the sick. At this church, we cast out devils. At this church, they shall prophesy. Fire of the Holy Ghost is in this house. Mark us, God. Mark us today, God. Every single one of us, come on, let's pray. Lord, do what only you can do. You know, as I was getting ready last night for this service, I spent about five or six hours. Come on, give them praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Have your way, oh God. Move in this house. We're gonna let them baptize, but I want you guys to just focus quickly on what I'm saying. They're gonna keep baptized. There's seven or eight. The line's gonna continue. So if you need to get baptized, we're just gonna make it a thing as we go into our shirt, as we pray. But yesterday, as I was preparing, I spent five or six hours. I was like, man, this is a great sermon I have ready to preach. I was excited. I was like, yes, Lord, thank you for giving me this word. At the end of my sermon, as I was in prayer, I had this experience with God where God basically told me, Isaiah, are you going to give me room tomorrow? Are you going to give me space tomorrow? Friend, we for so long have gone through the motions of church, but very few churches say, Lord, have room to do whatever you want to do. If you want to heal the sick, if you want demons to be cast out, if you want revival to break out, if you want to heal and restore and ignite passion, Lord, do what only you can do. So I, I wrestled with God. I wrestled with this because I'm like, well, I'm supposed to preach and, you know, people are coming and this and that. And so I, I messaged Pastor James. I said, Pastor James, I can't get away from this. The Holy Spirit's telling me we need to make room tomorrow. We need to throw up the agenda, the script, the schedule, the preaching, and let the Holy Spirit move and let revival happen. Let the fire of God. He was like, let's do it. Let's do it. And so I went on Facebook and posted. I said, I feel for all pastors on, on right now. I said, tomorrow the Lord is saying, make room. Clear out your schedule. Clear out your agenda. Get rid of your plan. Get rid of your, uh, your announcements. Get rid of your organized, what you're going to preach and what you're going to do. Remove your preconceived notions. Some of you came in thinking, oh, church is this way. I came in church as an atheist and left a revivalist because an encounter with God. Friend, you are one encounter away. This might be the last day you're ever an atheist. This might be the last day you're ever sick. This might be the last day the spirit of suicide tries to tell you to take your life. Now's the day of salvation. Today is the day. This is your moment. You're like, well, my Aunt, my aunt Betty invited me. No, she didn't. The Holy Spirit invited you. God brought you here because there's an encounter at this altar in this service waiting for you. There's a flame that has your name on it. So I posted, I thought nothing of it. About two hours went by, I checked the post, had 100,000 views on the post, and hundreds of pastors, listen to this, all over America said, Isaiah, the Lord told us that exact same thing, that if we make room, I had a pastor send me his notes. His notes were identical to my notes. I was like, 
Friend, there's revivals happening right now at college universities where young people are lining up not to do drugs, not to go to a rave, not to smoke, lining up for the presence of God. The devil is a liar. There is hope. There is hope for this generation. There is hope for this generation. So today, we're making room for God. We have no schedule, no plan, no agenda. We're gonna, we're gonna pray, we're gonna preach, pray, we're gonna cry out to God for the time that we have, and we are gonna ask God to do a deep work in our lives. We are tired, Lord, we are tired. Come on, let's pray. Lord, we are tired of going through the motions. Lord, we are tired of being a prayerless people. Lord, we want your spirit to move. We are a little bit more Isaiah, if you can. We are praying that, God, you would pour out your spirit on us today, God. Lord, we hunger and thirst for righteousness. I hear the Lord saying, some of you have lost your fire. You've lost your passion. And today, God is restoring your passion. Today, God is restoring your fire. Today, God is rem reminding you when he called you as a young boy. God is reminding you of when you were that young girl and that evangelist came, you were 12, 10, 13 years old and called you out and said you had a, you had a mighty call on your life and you've, you've been distant from God. You veered off from God and today the Holy Spirit is calling you back to that place, calling and you're older now. You say, Isaiah, I missed it. You didn't miss it in Jesus' name. Now's the day. Lord, spark that fire in us. God, today we repent, God. Publicly we repent for our prayerlessness. God, we repent for our apathy, our complacency, for, Lord, choosing everything else but you. Lord, we repent for making everything else. Come on, everyone should be praying. Making everything else a priority but you. That, God, we have lived our lives in this religious Christianity, but you've not called us to religion. You've called us to relationship with your son. That, Jesus, we are asking you to fill us today. We are asking you to encounter us today. Father, forgive us for our lives lack of attention to prayer, our lack of attention to worship. The writer of Hebrews says, how can we escape damnation if we neglect such a great salvation? Here's the sin I want to repent of this morning, and I want all of us to repent, is the sin of neglect. I want you to think about, in awe and reverence with, in the presence of God, how much you've neglected God, how all of us have gone astray. The Bible says there was a time where none were righteous, but that God looked for one man whose heart was turned towards him, one man that is loyal. I wonder if there would be one person today in this room that say, Lord, I repent for neglecting you. I want to be that one person whose heart is loyal. I want to be that one person who's desperate for revival. I'm tired of plastic, stale, dry religion. I need the move of the Holy Spirit in my life. I can't survive without revival. I can't go a minute, God, without your presence. Come on, let's pray. And that God, today we go directly before you. Friend, I want to tell you that you don't have to go to St. Anthony. You don't have to go to Francis or jo uh, John, or you don't have to pray to the, to the apostle Peter. You don't have to pray to Mary. The Bible declares that there is one, O-N-E. There is one mediator between God and man, and that is the man Christ Jesus. Jesus is our mediator. We have access to boldly go before him. So Jesus, today, we boldly come before your throne. We boldly come and we petition you for revival. We intercede for awakening in this nation, God. Lord, we're desperate for revival. I can't survive without it, God. I can't go on without you, Lord. I'm hungry for revival. I'm hungry. Come on, is your heart hungry? David said, my soul thirsts for the living God. You can survive 40 to 70 days without food, but you could survive three days without water before, you, before your body starts shutting down three days without water, up to 70 days without food. Scientists say that thirst is the strongest desire in the human body. And David says this, my soul is thirsting for the living God. He said, like a deer longs for water and pants for water, so my soul longs for you, O God. Where can I go and stand before you? Is there a thirst in us, life song? Is there a hunger in us, life song? 
Lord, give us the gift of brokenness. Give us the gift of tears. The Bible says every tear he bottles up. Sometimes when you don't know what to pray, tears are how you intercede. Brokenness. Some of you are feeling that brokenness. You're feeling the brokenness for yourself because you know how far you strayed from God and God is calling you back to the place of repentance and you feel the brokenness for our friends and family all around us that are literally, according to Scripture, going to hell. And we are unmoved. We could spend hours on social media and hours on the Internet and we're not moved to prayer. We're not moved to prayer. But today God is moving us to the place of prayer. God, I pray you would wound us for higher vision. I pray you would wound us, God. He said, don't rip your garments, rip your insides. I want you, I want you to be broken. I want you to be torn. I'm not okay with another school shooting, another fentanyl overdose, another young kid, eight years old, commits suicide. And we're so numb. And God is saying, I want there to be brokenness in my church. Lord, we cry out. Jesus said, pray like this, our Father. This is not just my Father, this is our Father who's in heaven. Friend, our God is not a mere man. He's not immortal. He's in heavenly places. The earth is his footstool. And today, I wonder how we'd pray if we knew we had access to the God of the universe, is enthroned above the galaxies, and he hears our prayer. And he says, if you'd pray today, and it's according to my will, I would respond. Pray, pray to the God in heaven. Don't pray to God like he's mere man. You didn't come for Isaiah. You didn't travel in for some YouTube preacher. You came because the, our Father, who are in heaven, holy is his name. Holy is your name, Lord. Come on, pray, church, pray. I'm just preaching you through prayer right now. Some of you aren't used to praying, so I'm preaching you through it. He said, pray this way. Holy is your name. There's nobody like our God. Friend, there is nobody like our God. He is holy. Yes. Jeremiah, he told the prophet Jeremiah, to whom can you compare me to? All your other gods have eyes, but they don't see. They have ears, but they don't hear. I'm a God that is alive. I'm Emmanuel, the God that is among us. Friend, our God hears our prayer and responds to our prayer with power. You shall receive power, Acts chapter 1, verse 8, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you shall become witnesses unto me. God is calling a generation of Holy Ghost-filled witnesses that would go into the earth and testify, we have seen him heal the sick. We have seen him raise the dead. We have watched demons flee in his name. Friend, our God is holy. Worthy is the Lord. Worthy to be praised. Isaiah said the train of his robe filled his temple. That when I prophet Isaiah saw him, he said, I'm a man of unclean lips. God, we're broken before you. Come on, church. Y'all should be praying right now. God, we don't need a prayer meeting. We need a prayer culture in this house. We don't need a prayer service. We need a prayer lifestyle. Lord, teach us to pray. God, we don't know anything. Oh, someone needs to say that right now. We don't know anything. God, teach us. Some of us know so much about theology and God and doctrine, but we don't know God. We are Father, Son, and Holy Scriptures instead of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God says, I want you to know me. God, I want to know you. God, we're tired of doing church and we don't know you. Like a treasure hidden in the field, the man finds the treasure, the Bible says, and sells everything to buy that field. I wonder if you've sold everything today. Oh God, help us. I wonder if you've sold everything. Oh, I'm a Christian because I prayed a prayer. And he says, I want you to sell it all. The girlfriend, the, guy, the boyfriend, the house, the job, the career. Jesus says, if you don't hate your family in comparison, you can't be my disciple. We have an entire generation that hasn't bought the field. We just go to church. The Bible says he with joy sells everything to buy the field because he knows there's a treasure there. Today, God is calling this church to buy the field. Like a man searching for a pearl of great price, searches his whole life like I did. 19 years old, I found that pearl, and I went and sold everything I had to buy that pearl. And God has called you. He's saying, sell it all. Get rid of all the distractions. Get rid of all the idols. Get rid of all the religiosity. Get rid of all the compromise. And buy the pearl. Buy the field. Oh, I'm a Christian.
depression because I prayed a prayer. That's not even in the Bible. We're like, we're Christians because we follow the religion of Christianity. Do you know the religion of Christianity is not in the Bible? Jesus said, I've come to make disciples. I'm not trying to make these watered down Instagram Christians. I really want to know you, Lord. Help us to know you. God, we want to know you today, Lord. Fill us. Come on, ask him to fill you with the Holy Spirit. Oh, God, fill us with your Holy Spirit. God, we're so, we're so lazy, Lord. Help us, God. Lord, you said don't, don't pray babbling the same thing like the Pharisees, for your Father knows what you need before you pray it. This is not religious. This is relational. Oh, God, we're coming honest before you, saying we've gone so long without you. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. Father, forgive me for being so complacent. Forgive me, Lord, for neglecting you. Lord, forgive us for neglecting your word. Lord, forgive us for worshiping the gods of social media, for worshiping the gods of this world, for becoming friends of the world, making ourselves enemy to you. Father, we pray today, forgive us and light us on fire. Light, come on church, light us on fire. This is about no man, but the one that sits at the throne of God. The one that is seated at the throne, God, light us on fire. Jesus said, if you be evil, know how to give good gifts. How much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? I dare somebody to ask the Father for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. I dare somebody to ask the Lord for the Holy Spirit. God, fill us with the Holy Spirit. Lord, we cry out to you like blind Bartimaeus, son of David, have mercy on us. I know this is making some of you very uncomfortable. That's the point. Revival will never happen in your comfort zone. I don't want to go to ordinary church. Well, my church, we're not at your church. I want to be in a place that says, Lord, we have no boundaries. We have no structure. If you tell us the night before, remove the schedule. Here we are, Lord. We're ready. We're making room. Make room right now. Tell the Lord I'm making room in my life. I'm making room this week, God. Pour out your spirit on us, God. Have your way. We need a culture of prayer. Without prayer, we will not survive these last days. God, teach us to pray. Jesus said, let, pray this, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It is not about you, friend. It is about the will of God. It is God's will that heaven would look like, that earth would look like heaven. And the last time I checked, there was no sick people in heaven. There was no demonized people in heaven. There was no lost people in heaven. We are called to spread the kingdom of God as ambassador of his kingdom right now on the earth. Lord, help us to lay hands on the sick. He said, they shall. He didn't say they might. He didn't say they might. He said, they shall cast out devils. They shall lay hands on the sick. They shall. Why do you guys cast out devils? Because he said, they shall do it. They shall heal the sick. If you're sick in body, you could get healed right now. Oh yeah, right now you could get healed supernaturally. I'm not talking about, oh, it's a process, brother. I'm not talking about, oh, I need to finish. I'm talking about right now, if you're sick in body, I feel the fire and the power of the Holy Ghost up in this room. You're waiting for what's the next thing? The next thing is we're letting God do what he wants to do. If you need physical healing in your body, raise your right hand right now, all over this room. We don't have room to put everybody at the altar. Physical healing. I want those of you that don't have your hand up to look around and you lay your hand and I'm going to help you pray for them. Just put your hand on somebody around you right now. Just put your hand on them. You don't have to get all crazy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you right now. I'm, I'm just going to pray with you and we're going to lead you in prayer. And some of you are about to see a miracle for the first time in your life through, the, for, through your very own hands. Thank you, Lord. This is revival, friend. We can't say we have revival when we're just having normal church services. Right now, in Jesus' name, we command bodies to be healed in Jesus' name. We command bodies to be healed. Sickness, you have no power. We command sickness to leave our bodies now in Jesus' name. We command sickness to leave our bodies now in Jesus' name. Father, we ask that the healing power of the Holy Spirit would begin to flow from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. We pray the healing power of God, the healing anointing of the Holy Spirit, be healed in Jesus' name.
Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Psalms 103, chapter, chapter 103, verse 3 says, all sickness and, and all disease. How do I know it's God's will? Because he took 39 lashes so you could be physically healed. He was bruised for you. He was whipped for you. Thank you, Lord. We command sickness to go. Just command that sickness to go right now. Sickness, leave now. You have no power. We come against you. Our Bible says we can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So we're only doing what the Bible tells us to do. James said, get the elders, anoint them with oil and pray the prayer. The prayer of a righteous man availeth much. There is power when we pray. Sickness has to go right now. Lung disease, heart disease, inflammation, cancerous tumors, diabetes. God, we're making room for you right now, Holy Spirit. Sickness must go in Jesus' name. Blood disease, high blood pressure, diabetes. Sickness has to go in Jesus' name. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is healing. There is wholeness. There is liberty. There is freedom. All over this room, God is healing the sick. Thank you, Lord. We're not doing the work. God's just working through us. Sickness, you have to go in Jesus' name. Disease, you have to go in Jesus' name. Paralysis. You have to go, Lord, we pray your healing power. Come on, I've watched deaf ears open. I've watched blind eyes open. Could he not do it again if he's done it for one? Doesn't the word of God declare he will do it for another? What a powerful God we serve. What a beautiful God we serve that heals the ailments of his children. I believe there's coming a day where there'll be no sick among us. We pray in Jesus' name, all sickness be healed right now. All sickness be healed. All sickness and matters of disease were healed at the power of his name. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, have your way. Come on, church, pray. Maybe you've been diagnosed and they say, oh, you're just schizophrenic because you see uh, demons or you hear voices or you're just, you know, OCD or you have bipolar. Friend, I come against every lie, every strategy, every plan of the enemy. It is not God's plan for you to see demons and hear voices. The devil is a liar. Up and out in Jesus' name. If you need deliverance, come up to this altar. If you need deliverance, prayer. Some of you have never seen deliverance. Well, it's okay. It's biblical. Acts chapter 8 says demons were cast out. The people were screaming as the demons left them, and there was great joy in that city. Some of you might say, well, what if a demon jumps out of them and jumps on me? That's unbiblical. That's never happened in the Bible. Jesus cast demons out in public every single where place he went. Mark chapter 1, Jesus started his ministry with casting out devils. So do not come up in here being a Pharisee saying, what if the demon, do, do, we're going to be biblical in this house. If you need deliverance, come up here. We're going to have some prayer team pray for you here. The altar's open here in Jesus' name. Fill us, God, with your Holy Spirit. Every unclean spirit must go. Come out in Jesus' name. This is the stuff that happened in the Bible. Some of you might be new. This is what happened in the Bible. It's real. This demonstrates the power of God, how real God is. Prayer team, just link up with people that you see that need deliverance. Every foul spirit must leave you now in Jesus' name. Those of you struggling with depression, anxiety, spirit of fear, the Bible declares fear is a spirit. For God has not given you a spirit of fear, but what spirit did God give you? Power, love, and a sound mind. So if a spirit's the opposite, it's not from God. More baptisms, praise the Lord in Jesus' name. This, this is looking like the book of Acts up in here. The sick are healed, devils are cast out, people are being baptized, disciples are being made. Woo, this is Book of Acts Sunday right here. Every foul spirit must go now. Loose them in Jesus' name, out of their bodies into the abyss. If you're struggling, God can deliver you from where you're at right now. We sever the tie of every gen. Some of you are under that generational curse. You say, well, it ran in my family. It stops today in Jesus' name. It ran in my family until it ran into me. Devil, you done lost your mind. I'm free in Jesus' name. The curse is broken. Come on, break that curse off your life. 
The blood of Jesus breaks the curse. Shimba Come out, Satan. Loose these people now in Jesus' name. Witchcraft is broken. Voodoo is broken. Every familiar spirit, leave in Jesus' name. I talk to people all over the country that say spirits are showing up to me, claiming to be my mom, my deceased dad, my deceased grandparents. That is not your grandparent. That is a familiar demon, a familiar spirit trying to get you to open up a door. We can't cast that spirit out in Jesus' name. The Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. It is appointed for man to die once, then comes judgment. Your loved ones are not floating around blessing you and talking to you. Those are demons. The devil is a liar. We break witchcraft today in Jesus' name. Spirit of religion, we break you in Jesus' name. Y'all don't realize the religion killed Jesus. Oh, come on. The Holy Spirit's moving right now in power. If you have not been filled with the Holy Spirit, just begin to ask the Lord to fill you. Isaiah, how do I get filled with the Holy Spirit? Hunger and thirst, Jesus said, and I will give you rivers of living water. So you just have to be hungry and thirsty, and then you just have to ask the Father. Father, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Come on, ask the Father. Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. I make room for you today, oh God. Fill me with the Holy Spirit and fire. In Acts chapter 2, they were all together when those tongues as a fire rested upon each of them. There's tongues of fire coming and resting upon people right now so that you can be a witness when that Holy Spirit, Acts chapter 1 verse 8, comes upon you. Come on, Jesus has commissioned us. Healing, deliverance, revival. Some of you need to repent. You've been living in gross sexual sin. You, you may need deliverance, but we also need repentance. Right now, God's calling this church. We need to repent from the spirit of perversion. We need to repent from lust, sexual immorality. The Bible, Solomon says, lust, her hands are like chains. Her soft hands are like chains. Lust is a spirit that wants to keep you in bondage. But today, we come against that spirit in Jesus' name. Come out. Come on, there's freedom. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Keep praying, church. We're going to go a couple more minutes. Keep praying. Keep praying. Thank you, Lord, that there's a church in Stockton that's hungry for you to move. Thank you, Lord for sending revival to us, God. We don't want to miss it. Thank you, Lord. Acts chapter 8, verse 6. The crowds listened to Philip and heard his message, and they saw the signs and wonders that he did, and many evil spirits were cast out, screaming as they left their victims, and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. So there was great joy in that city. Friend, there is great joy. There is great joy when demons scream out. There's great joy today in Stockton, California. Never the same. Make room. We're making room. We don't have a plan. I don't have a sermon right here ready to go. Notes. We're making room for God to move. I want you to pray this prayer. Lord, this week I make room for you. Lord, do whatever you want to do. Get me out of the way. I make room for you, oh God. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and use me this week for your purposes. Thank you, Jesus. Right now, for those that have lost their passion, I want you to ask the Lord to rekindle that fire. Some of you I know, I know you from six years ago, eight years ago, three years ago. You lost the fire. You're back here today. You've come. Praise the Lord. A speaker did not bring you here. A flyer did not bring you here. My YouTube channel did not bring you here. God used those things to bring you here. You're here by divine appointment. Don't leave without what God has for you. Thank you, Lord. This is a move. We're going to sing the chorus of this is a move. And we're going to ask the Lord if he would start a move today in us. 
You can't make revival happen. You can't fabricate it. I've been a part of two legitimate revivals. One that went almost 10 years, one that God used me to start in Arizona that's been going on for eight years. And I'll tell you the one thing I know, you can't make a revival happen, otherwise we do it all the way, everywhere we go. But here's what you can make happen, hunger and thirst. You can make that, and that's what activates the Holy Spirit moving in a church, in a place. So you can't make revival, but you can make yourself hunger and thirst, and that is the prerequisite to a move of the Holy Spirit. So we don't know what God is doing. We don't fully understand it. The only thing he told us was make room. Didn't give us all the instructions of what we, what we do. We just are gonna make room. So today, ask him, restore that fire, restore that passion. Let's sing this chorus here, and then we're gonna pray one more time and dismiss you guys.